everyone, today we have another video about Nintendo Switch 2 because we got a big update to it today. Well, at least in the rumorville, although this is coming from Nate the Hate, who is one of the most reliable insiders out there with a pretty safe and proven track record. Obviously, no one's 100% on this stuff. No journalist is 100%, but he does have a proven track record. And honestly, we do give him a bit more credence than we do give other people when they talk about Nintendo Switch 2, and hence why you're seeing a slightly different title this time around. Now, what's really interesting about the stuff that he had to go over here is that he does go over a bunch of the rumors that have been covered and what he finds wrong with them, including something that he thinks might have some validity and yes gives us brand new not known before information on nintendo switch 2 now before we jump into the video i just want to remind you that we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers i'd appreciate if you would drop a like subscribe to the channel and ring -a -ling that ding -a -ling to be notified of all future uploads all right let's dive right in so he gave us information over on his podcast episode that i highly suggest if you want the complete context you go watch him and MVG put on a pretty good show over there. A lot of technical know-how and inside knowledge between those two. Now, Nate the Hate uh, started off by talking about all of the Nash Weedle rumors, stuff that we've covered here as well, uh, starting with the Tokyo Game Show rumors and the claims that Yakuza is coming to Switch 2 probably close to launch. And they cast doubt on pretty much everything Nash Weedle said, but they did note it's not like this is anything they can definitively disprove. Neither have heard anything out of Tokyo Game Show other than maybe some low-level dev chatter on the floor, but nothing like what occurred at Gamescom when Nintendo was showing you know, off the Switch 2 behind the scenes, showing off demos at least. And obviously they provide some solid foundations for doubt, noting that Xbox, you know, why would they go to Tokyo Game Show to see the Switch 2? They could just cross the street. Yeah, their headquarters are literally right next to Nintendo of America. So they wouldn't really need to do that there. It obviously is a very good point brought up. They do say it is possible at Tokyo Game Show that Nintendo might have taken devs off-site to their headquarters or out to lunch to talk about the Switch 2, but eh, they said the interesting part of Nash Weedle's recent rumors is not only how safe in nature they are, but they're also basically impossible to refute without being Nintendo themselves, even the Yakuza stuff. Nate reached out to people to try and see what's going on, and one source did tell him that there wasn't plans with Yakuza for Switch 2, but it's not something that he's like extremely confident in and has multiple sources on. So you can't be like, oh, this isn't going to happen. In fact, it makes sense for it to happen someday. So in other words, they have severe doubts about Nash Weedle and having any actual information that they haven't heard, but they can't outright say he's wrong due to the vague nature of what he's been talking about. Uh, it's one of those press X to doubt moments, but you can't technically definitively disprove him. So... I guess Nash Weedle survives for another day. All right, moving on. They go into some other stuff they think is fake that also might have something in it that's true. It's quite interesting. We have all those rumors that came from Soldier Delta. If you don't remember what he did, he was the one that said, like, oh, NG is the code name. Here's the release date. Oh, and there's a digital and physical model. So... It's pretty interesting what they said. They said the code name is obviously wrong, but what actually piqued Nate the Hate's ears up was when there was that two skew thing. One of them being a digital model, obviously one being uh, having a physical cartridge slot. Because Nate claims he's actually heard the same thing, but just from a single source, and he hasn't been able to get this corroborated. So... He does think it's very interesting to think about, and MVG and him do go on to talk about how it actually does make sense. A lot of people in the industry are doing it. People should be talking more about this particular aspect of it rather than focusing on all the things that are probably wrong in this because, again, this is something that's also starting to get mentioned by others, and it's something Nate has heard. So who knows? You know, This is one of those, hey, some extra verification or some extra solidarity behind the two skew thing, but also, eh, you know, he's not 100% on it either. Again, he needs to probably get closer to launch and, and get more solid sourcing on that information. Now, he casts serious doubts on other parts of the rumors like the launch dates. He says, at best, a partner would probably have only been told uh, intended launch periods like quarter one, two, three, or four, maybe a fall 2024, or at best, an intended launch month. But if they are saying that it's got, you know, a year out, 
you're not, you know, dev partners, even like Microsoft and Activision Blizzard, they wouldn't know the exact day this thing was going to launch if it was a year out. So it doesn't really feel like something a partner would know. Uh, and they also don't think that the special Nick rumors about the digital only model uh, not being backwards compatible make any sense. Of course, they, again, they can't verify. They're just talking about things. It's also important to note that special Nick was speculating that the digital model would be a, you know, wouldn't have the backwards compatibility. He just says that there would be a model with and a model without. Uh, the digital stuff doesn't come from him. He was just bringing those rumors in and then, you know, trying to link up what he's heard to those rumors. They don't really think there's much here uh, with this, and it could be something that maybe was canceled, and Nick himself said it could have been canceled. But, yeah, they don't disprove him. They just don't think Nintendo would do that. This is where uh, he, Nate the Hate goes on to make a point that I have made as well, and this has to do with patents. I talked about this just yesterday with patents going around, where you're seeing all these headlines, Nintendo Switch 2 looks very strange, blah, blah, blah. Patents that come out for hardware that has never been announced are just ideas that they didn't go forward with. It is fun to talk about, but that's all. It's canceled projects. None of the Switch 2 patents that you see out there, people report on, are actually Nintendo Switch 2 patents. And I gotta say, there is one disappointing thing about this. Remember the liquid-based hall sensing sticks that we saw that we were hoping would be on Switch 2? Yeah, chances are those are scrapped, and whatever they're actually using on Switch 2 is something else entirely. Hopefully still hall sensing sticks, there's other ways to do them, but that particular method uh, is highly likely not being used. I mean, look, this is just how it goes. You will get patents for things already announced. Like we have the patent that was based around Tears of the Kingdom after Tears of the Kingdom was already announced. But again, that was after something was announced. These patents all coming out before anything's announced have nothing to do with what's to come. That's just how patents work. It is interesting to look at and talk about and speculate on, but it doesn't really hold much water. And I've known this for a while. Uh, we've talked about a couple of them but we have really started to steer more and more away from giving patents any sort of credence, at least until something's announced. Like a patent, like a Switch 2 is announced and then patents start to drop about tech. Well, yeah, that could be related now that the system's announced. But for right now, the patents don't really matter at all. All right, now this is where we get to the fun stuff, the brand new info Nate the Hate has here. There's a couple of things in here. Obviously, you know, he's sort of corroborating two SKUs, a digital and, you know, a one with a physical cart. Again, he's not really 100% on that, but at least he admits he's heard something. But this is actual new info that he has corroborated with several developers, and he's like dead on serious about this stuff. The Switch 2 will have ray reconstruction. All those debates over whether or not that Matrix Awakens demo at Gamescom was DLSS 3.1 or DLSS 3.0 or DLSS 3.5, it is 3.5. Why? Because that is where Ray Reconstruction was added, and Ray Reconstruction is awesome, awesome, awesome for many ways. It, it a, a lot of uh, companies when you're using, well, pretty much all of them when you're using ray tracing, use a denoiser filter, and it ends up lowering the quality of the image and not even producing the best ray tracing either. So ray reconstruction uses AI rendering and as part of the latest AI models NVIDIA has. Like this is like the latest and greatest technology available from NVIDIA and it allows for super resolution upscaling and ray reconstruction at the exact same time. That's NVIDIA's latest and greatest stuff. This comes directly from them on what, the, what ray reconstruction and DLSS 3.5 really means. Now, just to note something about ray reconstruction, it doesn't really give you more frame rates by using it. What it does is it gets rid of, it gets rid of the need to use denoisers if you are using ray tracing, giving a much better looking picture when ray tracing is being used. Essentially, it helps perfect ray tracing. And no, this technology is not available in any form for PlayStation 5 and Xbox, explaining how ray tracing might actually realistically have looked better on Switch 2 in the Matrix demo. Nate goes on to say that he says it should be obvious, and he can talk about this, the chip inside the Nintendo Switch 2 is completely customized, as in it is built specifically for the Nintendo Switch 2. And it comes with a completely custom feature set that no other device from NVIDIA 
has. There is nothing currently available out there to do any one-to-one -one comparisons of what this chip will actually be capable of. And what we think the chip is the T239, and we think we have an idea of what the T239 can do, the reality is, even those that will tell you like what we think the general specs are, it's still general. There isn't actually anything to directly compare to, and I think that's the point he's making. For all this talks about how well this thing can perform and this and that, we really don't have a true way to do it. I know like Rich over at uh, Digital Foundry was looking into possibly, you know, he, he's working on some stuff and going to try to see uh, a, a ballpark estimate for Switch 2 and, and what its performance could be. But in the end, it's completely customized chip and we don't know. We, we It's impossible until developers start giving us exact details to really quantify what this chip is capable of. Now, NVIDIA is putting together a system that's going to perform extremely admirably for the foreseeable future. This is their words. The Switch 2 won't feel outdated by, say, 2026 or feel antiquated. Obviously, this is sort of a reference to the Nintendo Switch where, yes, it was most powerful gaming handheld. Like, it was super powerful in 2017, right? It was the most powerful gaming handheld in the world at the time, but it was already showing signs of age by the end of 2017 and then definitely in 2018. And by 2019, it just felt like an out-of-date piece of technology. And yeah, they were just talking about like what companies and game devs could actually do with the system. Uh, this one's going to be actually avoiding all of that and giving Nintendo a really strong position performance-wise for the foreseeable future. And they even talk about how there is this potential that between the consoles, the Nintendo Switch 2 might have the best-looking ray tracing of them all. And I think, uh, if I recall right, Nate actually went over on Family Boards and he clarified two things about this ray reconstruction stuff because a lot of people are like, oh, well, just because it technically can do it doesn't mean it's something people are going to use. And he said, look, I went through, I verified this with a bunch of people. If I'm bringing this up, it's not just because it's technically possible. It's because it's viable. It is something that developers will actually be using and have a use case for. Now, he does note that maybe the use case is only in docked mode where you get extra power draw. So you're not limited by obviously a low wattage battery output for handheld so it could be something where hey ray tracing off in handheld ray tracing on in docked mode with ray reconstruction to give you the better picture quality and as noted by nvidia themselves ray reconstruction can work with their latest ai models directly with their super sampling which is their upscaling technology the only thing that you know hasn't been talked about and likely isn't there is going to be frame generation which was added with dlss 3.0 it's just part of the feature set that's not going to be used but you know what guys that's all right because frame generation has quite a cost at times and it's you know what we're talking about the nintendo switch 2 using some latest and greatest technology developed by nvidia you can start to see why maybe some of that stuff floating out there about how, oh, NVIDIA is very proud of this. It might want their name on the box. And again, that's another Nash Weedle rumor. But you can start to see why that could be the case. NVIDIA probably is very proud of this product. They did make it specifically tailored just to what Nintendo needs and what NVIDIA thinks they need and their partners probably want. And you know what? If they pair this thing with 12 gigabytes of RAM and we already are hearing things about fast load times and so they're clearly using faster internal storage. And look, guys, things are sounding on the up and up. There is basically not a negative thing in existence for Nintendo Switch 2 right now, which is crazy. I will note, though, that there is that one minor criticism. The 8-inch LCD, some people want it to be like this. They want it to be the OLED. They think it's going to be hard to go away from the OLED screen back to LCD. And that's a fair criticism, of course. But again, it's not announced yet. Maybe multiple SKUs. One of them has an OLED screen. One doesn't. No idea, guys. We're obviously just all waiting for Nintendo to reveal this thing. No updates in here on when he expects reveals or any of that. That's stuff they talked about in prior episodes. And even then, it's all speculation. But I just wanted to bring the latest and greatest to you from one of the most reliable insiders. I don't know when or if he's going to talk about anything Nintendo Switch 2 again the rest of this year. Who knows? It's as the information comes in. Thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll catch you in the next video.